I'm Lorna Cole. I'm a senior ecologist with SAC Consulting. We are here in this peatland bog and it lies just in East Ayrshire and it's currently in quite a degraded state. We can see it's very dominated by hazers. So this bog is just about to undergo restoration. So following restoration, we'd hope to see more positive indicators. So more sphagnum mosses and cotton grass. Peatlands, they provide a huge diversity of ecosystem services. They support biodiversity, they regulate and purify water flows, and they sequester and store carbon. Unfortunately, in Scotland, about 60% of our peatlands are degraded, and these peatlands are actively emitting carbon. To help Scotland meet its net zero targets, we therefore need to focus on restoring degraded peatlands. Restoration of peatlands can be quite a minefield to navigate. However, there's a variety of organisations out there to support land managers. These organisations can help you determine funding sources. They can work out what actions are, need, are needed on the ground and even help you implement these actions. And finally, they can help ensure that the climate benefits of the project are quantified and verified in line with the Peatland Code. And this allows land managers to tap into carbon credits. Hi, my name is Laura Curtis Moss. I'm People and Projects Manager for the East Ayrshire Coalfield Environment Initiative. One of the things we do is work with farmers and landowners who are interested in peatland restoration projects. The farmer and landowner at this site got in touch with us because they wanted us to support the restoration of this peatland site. Um, in particular, they got in touch because they'd had a positive experience with doing some tree planting um, for which they did receive some financial aid. Uh, and they were hoping that they would be able to do the same and take advantage of carbon credits through the peatland code. For land managers and farmers who are interested in peatland restoration, there are a number of different routes you can go down if you want to secure some financial aid. You can look for private investment through the LENS approach. Another big supporter in Scotland is Nature Scots Peatland Action Fund. And of course, if you do pay some of the money up front yourself, you'll be eligible for carbon credits through the peatland code. There's lots of different ways of restoring peatland, but basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to make the peatland more wet and we're trying to slow the water down. Depending on the site, different interventions are going to be more appropriate. Generally, we try and do reprofiling of very steep hags and gullies that have been severely eroded, but the majority of the work we do is in building dams. These can be wooden dams, which make a nice safe stock bridge if you have sheep on the site. Um, they can be peat dams built from uh, peat that's left over from reprofiling. And as a last resort, we can also use plastic piling, which is good for very, very wide watercourses. When restoring peatland, um, there are quite a few difficulties that you might encounter. One of the big ones we've been tackling at this site is making sure that there's a safe way to access the site from the main road. Um, the current gateway is quite narrow and we will have some heavy machinery that we need to bring on. One of the difficulties that we might come across on a peatland site is the presence of endangered or protected species. For example, we would usually try to do our um, heavy machinery work out with the breeding bird season, so we're not going to disturb any ground nesting birds. Another example, which is quite unusual, what we did encounter here, is we actually found a badger set on the site. Now badgers obviously are a protected species, and either way it would be very bad practice to disturb them with heavy machinery. Restored peatlands are vulnerable to grazing pressures, but there's no reason why you wouldn't be able to continue grazing, for example, sheep on a site like this. We would generally expect that stocking numbers would be slightly lower than they maybe had been previously, but there is a benefit in that a restored peatland may actually be safer for livestock as it won't have fast flowing water. And of course, some of those blocked ditches that I was talking about before can provide nice safe crossing spaces for your animals to cross larger pools of water. 
If you want to get carbon credits through the Peatland Code, you have to go through a process of validation and accreditation, and not all projects are eligible. So your peat depth has to be at least 50 centimetres over at least 75% of the site. And this will vary depending on the length of the project. In terms of the peatland code, you are required to maintain the site for a number of years afterwards. Now, what that maintenance looks like will vary from site to site. Typically, it would involve ensuring that any failed ditches are repaired. Um, and we would expect some surveying and monitoring to make sure that the biodiversity is developing as expected.